Hello, I'm David Breeden. I'm the Senior Minister at First Unitarian Society in Minneapolis, and I'm pleased to have with me today our Director of Religious Education, Jan Dever. Jan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm really pleased to talk about Unitarian Universalism, um, a profession and a religion that I love. I started um, as a teacher and have my master's degree in education and taught for 10 years. But after that, um, I had a three-year-old child and I started uh, searching like a lot of people do for a religious home, but a religious home with no dogma um, and no creeds to say. And I did a lot of church shopping and I found Unitarian Universalism and it was the greatest aha moment of my life. And I see that so much with people who come in our doors. Like, aha, where have you been all my life? Um, they are, so I started uh, being more involved in my church, became a director of religious education. I've been doing it now for 23 years. It's just a wonderful combination of working with children and curriculum and adults in a liberal religious faith that I love. So it's really become my passion. That's one of the things I've noticed about people who come to Unitarian Universalist congregations. Very often they are a, a couple of mixed religious background or perhaps they have never been raised in any kind of religious tradition. Uh, they have kids, they want to have some kind of religious education in their kids' lives, but they're, uh, they don't want that dogma. They don't want the this is the way mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. thing going on. Well, I find that, that um, there's several kinds of people. There are people who are actually have been raised Unitarian Universalist and are looking for us, although that's a very small percentage. Mostly, um, they're people who have had really good religious experiences, like I did growing up. Um, but they do not want the dogma for their children. They want more of a free thinking, mm -hmm. um, what I call a theological literacy um, for their children. And so they come to us because they know they'll get that. Um, some people come to us, Unitarian Universalism, because they've been scarred by their religious um, mm -hmm. upbringing. Um, bad things happen to them and they want no part. Um, but they do feel like they want to be part of a community that talks about values, how to raise their kids. Again, the uh, religious literacy part of it. I mean, you can't live in this world without having uh, religion be uh, brought up as a topic. And um, so I, I think there's, a, and then there are people who are in marriages that have different religious backgrounds and they're looking for a faith community that really values both of their faiths and mm -hmm. all of faith. And that's what we can offer them too. So it's a really, uh, just like our um, theology from our adults, it's broad-based um, and um, that's what we do with our children in our um, community. Well, I went to Sunday school as a kid and we called it Sunday school and that's one of the, th the differences I see immediately is that uh, Unitarian Universalists don't tend to call it Sunday school, it's religious education. Mm -hmm. But my Sunday school involved um, memorizing Bible verses, for mm -hmm. example, uh, learning the stories, uh, Noah and the Ark, and, and, uh, but it was very specifically biblical based uh, with a very specific Point of view. How does Unitarian Universalist religious education differ from that? Well, I, I think it differs mostly because it's broader than just the uh, Christian and Hebrew Bible studies that you and I maybe went to Sunday school with. But religious Sunday school has morphed into religious education, which is now morphed into religious explorers in our community. Because not only are we educating kids about topics, um, Buddhism, Islam, um, na na Native American spirituality, Unitarian Universalism, of course, um, and then Bible literacy. But we're also um, helping them find their own questions and wonder about their own things. So not only do we present things, to information to them, 
but we let them wonder about things. We let them wonder about whether there is a God. Um, we do not tell them if there is or there isn't, but we present them with a lot of worldviews, a lot of different religious views, and let them sort out what makes sense to their head and their heart. So our Sunday schools um, that we went to said, this is the way to think, this is what you do when you think this way, you, you go to church and you do this and that. Um, for our children, they get a much broader perspective on, on all kinds of religions. And I find that that is what parents are really searching for for their children uh, because of this is the, the world we live in. Mm -hmm. um, I never used to hear about Islam when I was growing up, but we certainly do now. And, um, and we also certainly hear a lot of bad things say about Islam. Mm -hmm. And we don't hear that it's a peaceful religion or what the tenets of Islam really are. Um, we just get all this kind of blather in the news. And our children spend um, the fall term, nine weeks studying Unitarian Universalism, our purposes and principles that we live by. Um, and then in the winter term, we study all sorts of world religions for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. So we will study um, creation stories from around the world. Mm -hmm. We will study Buddhism or Islam. Uh, we will have our kids traveling in a curriculum called Neighboring Face to all sorts of different neighboring face to um, really go and experience what the people are like in these faith traditions, as well as the information about the faith. So they actually go to temples and other churches? Yes, and we'll, go, we'll go to the, uh, a mosque, we'll go to um, Clouds and Water Zen Center, we'll go to a Jewish temple, we'll go to a very evangelical um, Christian church, we'll go to a very um, Christian mega church in the area, so the kids get a, a, a feeling, a sense, an affective feeling, as well as uh, learning the content of what that religion's about. And then in the spring term, we look at um, the Bible as a piece of literature, and we do Bible literacy, with what we call Bible literacy with the kids. So I think you can't even get past the SAT scores, SATs <laughs> uh, tests, without really sometimes knowing biblical characters, um, biblical references, um, and that's what we offer the kids, the stories, the characters, but not the um, dogma of this really happened. We get, go into what does this story make you think about how to live life? What, does this what are the characters in this story trying to tell you about how to be as a person? Um, in sixth and seventh grade, we have a story, uh, a curriculum called Jesus, Man, Myth, or Savior. So mm -hmm. after studying who this person was, our kids get to decide for themselves at this point in their lives, we tell them, because it always can change, whether they think Jesus was a regular man, a myth, or a savior. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that gives you sort of um, a broader sense of what our kids do. And then when they get into eighth and ninth grade, we go even a little further with that, and we do a coming of age program with them. We say, you have been in our religious education community um, and explorers group for hopefully a lot of your childhood. Now what are you thinking? Um, at this, again, this point of your life. So for the first nine weeks, we look at character and values. What mm. kind of character do you have? Um, what kind of character do you want to have? Um, what kind of character do you need? What character traits do you need to get through difficult times? Mm. Um, then the next session in coming of age would be the big questions. Um, how do you make choices in your life? What do you base that on? Why do bad things happen to good people? All of those kind of topics. And then in the final session in Coming of Age, they actually write a credo 
about what they believe, about how they should be as a person, what they're thinking religiously, mm. and they give it, they present it to our congregation. Mm. Um, this is a big rite of passage in our community. Um, and then on the alternate year when they're not doing coming of age, we have a year-long sexuality curriculum for our kids, which is nothing but a gift um, to them. A year-long study um, exploration, not about just the nitty-gritty of uh, sex, but all the affect uh, thinking around, why should I do that? Why should I not do that? What do boys think? What do girls think? Um, topics that um, go far beyond what people can do in the public schools these days. Mm. Um, so it is, it is just a gift. And then our high schoolers have a very active um, curriculum. Um, they decide what topics they are, want to explore. They've been through our Religious Explorers program. Now what do they want to focus on? And not only that, but through all of our grades, we put a big emphasis on um, doing social action. So the senior high will really get into what, what do we want for social action to do um, for social action activities. So kids are not taught what to think, but I suppose the, the how to think mm -hmm. through this process. Mm -hmm. And um, with the added, um, part of learning about other religions then. Right. 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 Okay. All right. Right. Very interesting. And then the, and then they are as a graduation then what they themselves have come to believe or at least as you, as you said at that point anyway. At that point in their life. So we have kids at that point of their lives in eighth and ninth grade when they're giving their coming of age speeches that say I really um, believe that I am an atheist but I believe that I should live ethically, and, um, but I still believe that um, community is very important. I've enjoyed mm. my time in this community. We have kids who get up and say, I talk to God every night. <laughs> they, uh, God helps me decide my decisions. Mm. And, and that's the range, and our um, kids are comfortable in our community saying, those things because they they have been thoughtful and very careful about their thinking about it mm -hmm. so and people appreciate that uh, adults accept that yes 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 I have heard some of these and they are just just amazing I'm I I always think I couldn't have done that at 17 well, last year we kind of experimented with the adults doing it. And I must say that the kids were much better than the adults. I think, you know, you're not used to thinking in those kind of terms. And our kids have come through a program that leads them into that kind of uh, comfort of, of thinking, yeah, I, this is what I believe and this is how I want to live. So they're religious searchers, but they're also allowed to come to a place of this is where I want to be if if that's what they want to do. Or right, that's, right. Uh, I think going back to the question is why people come um, to the church too. I think they they want to be, people want to be kids, youth, adults, want to be in a community of searchers. Uh, the community being um, as important as the seeking. The um, community um, allows them to have groups to talk about things, to do service projects mm -hmm. together, um, educate their children. It's the community that is the, the value add for um, so many people. Yeah, community is important to us as Unitarian Universalists, of course, and so uh, that sharing community, and, and uh, you mentioned our uh, whole lives, the sexuality program mm -hmm. that we do. Uh, I know that uh, when I was their age, I thought, Boys and girls were completely different creatures, I suppose, mm -hmm. and uh, being able to share in that uh, and to actually talk about those issues. Uh, it's, uh, it's um, I was brought up that, you know, the, the girls went into a separate room and the boys went into a separate room and, and had their information. Our approach to sexuality is that it's a part of a lifelong journey. Um, our program not only focuses on junior high, but we have a kindergarten and first grade, a second and